Assalamu alaikum rahmatullahi barakatuhu. Very nice to be here. Pat Abdullah, thank you as always for your generous support of the community. And um, I think I just want to welcome Mikael. And um, there's some other folks I, I may know. If people can, are you willing to come on to camera just for a moment? We can just uh, behold each other in this garden of roses that we are. I mean, sometimes I feel like a dandelion, but anyway, that's good enough. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Mikael, welcome. Rivka, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> welcome to everyone, not you, Ma. Mara Pat. Sorry, Alima, my sister, Latifa, Saudia, Muhammad, and 41062 Sip Boy. That's an interesting Sufi name. <laughs> Just kidding. Anyway, so Alhamdulillah, very glad to be here. Again, thanking Abdullah Pat, Pat. We'll start with the Fatiha, the opener. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbi Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yom Iddin Iyak Na'abudu wa Iyak Nasta'in Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustaqim Sirat Al-Ladin An'amta Alayhim Ghayr Al-Magdubi Alayhim Subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alfu salam. Alfu salam. Alfu salam salamina fi kulubina. Welcoming all of the holy beings that seek the light. And uh, just, if you're willing to just take a moment. And just feel into why, what your heart needs. Why are you here? What are you looking for? Or just anything. What is your, in other words, make, if you'd like to make it into a prayer or an intention, just take a moment and ask for what you need. Whether you receive it in the next time with us all together or in another time. Allah. You can certainly keep praying throughout the hour if you wish. Inshallah, Allah hears our prayers. Inshallah. Amin. 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 Um, I, if I use any terms that don't make any sense, I'm try not to use too much Sufi speak. Please put it in the chat and uh, Pat Abdullah will get my attention to explain it. I don't think we'll go there, but you never know. Um, Thanking Pat Abdullah again. And um, so the title of this time together is called Sweet Freedom. It's the 4th of July, Independence Day for America. <clears throat> that definition's gone through all kinds of reevaluations and thrashings and throws over the years. Um, the definition for S S Independence Day, sweet freedom for us in the next hour, <clears> or <throat> the query is clearly we live in challenging times. Would you like to respond well to whatever comes down the pike? <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not leave us without help. The capacity to know when and how to stand firm and when and how to adapt serves us personally in our relationships, in our work in the world. 
So for true freedom, we're going to learn some tools. <clears throat> and, you know, the, <clears throat> the worship of the Sufi is not <clears throat> sitting on a mountaintop and eating bean sprouts, which has its place. Clearly, if there are paths that do that, then Allah wants that for that path. Our path is about seeking God, seeking Allah, seeking to know ourselves as manifestations of Allah through every part of our life. So it's not a path to pop out of our head and fly around in the ethers and not pay attention to the body or to our family or that kind of thing, for example. It's a path, it's like the more earth, the more heaven. For whatever Allah's reasons were, <laughs> when Allah said kun, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said kun, be, and the unfolding of the creation began, we were a result of that. So being spiritual beings in a physical body, being ruh in a physical body is completely intended and cherished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's not always easy, right? We know this. I wanted to um, tell you about a 4th of July, almost 40 years ago. I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Africa. <clears throat> and I don't know <clears throat> what it's like for any of you. Keep my volume up. Okay. <clears throat> I think I'll just have to do it like this. Tell me if... Pop, pop up. Is this better, Pat Abdullah? Yes, it is better. Okay. And don't, don't hesitate to remind me. You can cut okay, it. thanks. You know what it's like when you transmit. Salima says that all the time. I've joined the ranks. <laughs> um, so I was a Peace Corps volunteer in Africa. And I don't know if any of you, maybe some of you are here from another country or you've lived in another country for a period of time or just lived in another part of the U.S. or somewhere new. And there are so many things about it that's, that are different. So, for example, I lived in the People's Republic of Benin. Um the angle of the sun was different. The, uh, the stars at night were completely different from home. The smells in the air, the smells of the flora and the fauna were different. The cooking smells were different. The fumes from automobiles and uh, mo mostly mopeds actually were different. Um, everything, you know, nature, you look out the window, you, I wouldn't see you know, a, uh, a beech tree, I would see some kind of tree that finds itself in wooded savannah, which is where I was living. Um, people, of course, were very different, the language, mentality, and I almost was dizzy in my first days there. It was like my brain was having a hard time, like, computing it and normalizing it. Um, so thinking about what it's like to land in a new place and... Uh, try to connect and ground and make sense out of what's going on. Um, there are also some things that were reliable, like the sun would rise and set. I was with, among human society, even if it was very different. Um, I had a task there and so forth. But the way I spoke to myself, the things that I thought about, what my day was like every day was very, very different. So, um, and slowly, you know, I learned to ride my moped or my bicycle. I was two different places, so I do different things. Uh, to shop in the open air market, um, to enjoy, really enjoy African food, enjoy my African friends and my students. Right, and every now and then. I would feel so homesick wanted to have a hamburger. I wanted to see my mom. I wanted to speak American slang. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I wanted to go home. And then the American consulate invited us, all of us, we, it wasn't even an embassy, it was, uh, it was a very small country and the U.S. had a presence, but they had a big 4th of July party for all of the consulate people and all of the military and all of the Americans and they invited us Peace Corps volunteers and I mean, these were folks who had li were living like on, an, on a military base or in the consulate and they were like very 
in the American culture. We had been up country and we were living as I described, you know, no running water, no electricity, all of it. Um, but we were like, cool, a, a 4th of July picnic, because clearly, you know, my African friends didn't really relate to that so much. So I took the bush taxi down, you know, with people from my my town, were, you know, it was just the regular form of transport with the goats and the chickens, and um, found myself at the embassy, that's actually a charge d'affaires, and I walked through the gates, and it was like going through the looking glass. There was a green manicured lawn and rock and roll blasting and American flags everywhere and coolers of Budweiser and Coca-Cola and there were ice cream sandwiches and popsicles and uh, a guy with a buzz cut uh, at the grill turning out hot dogs and hamburgers. Um, people were playing baseball, they were wearing shorts and t-shirts um, and I felt like I was in another planet. I did not feel at home. And I couldn't even relax and speak English like American slang because once you, you know, I was, had been speaking Beninese French for over, about a year, all of my um, all of my English was peppered with Beninese expressions, <laughs> and a lot of the embassy folks didn't understand that because they weren't speaking that kind of French or they weren't speaking that much French. Uh, again, I was almost dizzy, um, and I wanted to go back to my village even though I uh, didn't feel I belonged there either. So the point being, um, you know, I had adapted from the outside, but on the inside I was really uh, unmoored, I was at sea. Um, and you know, in the recent pandemic, um, we've had to adapt, we're still adapting. There's some places in the world that are in tremendous flux, that are still adapting tremendously. Um, you know, Culture shock can come in many ways. It can come when you pick up and go to another country. It can come when you pick up and come home. It can come when something like a pandemic or a divorce or anything, a severe illness can come. Um, culture shock can come when the ruh drops into the physical body and says, where am I? I don't know this place. And from that place, the cry can be, Allah, I want to go home. Rumi would say it's the reed crying for the reed bed. If anyone ever experiences that. But the good news is, we can come home in the body. We can come home uh, even with a, a restless and expansive and beautiful ruh and a physical body made out of clay. We all know that clay goes clunk. <laughs> it can be very unglamorous. We can do it. Um, Sidi, who, those of you who knew Sidi al-Jamal, uh, was a very sturdy man. You know, he had big hands. He walked with a firm step. He had a strong face. He had a loud voice when he needed it to be loud. He ate good food. He ate ice cream. He um, hung out with people. <clears throat> you know, he smoked the hookah. Sidi was not a, a rarefied, removed from the physical kind of spiritual teacher at all. <clears throat> so let's walk together into that a little bit. If you can find the intention to, uh, to come home even more. You may feel actually very in your body normally. That's great. Maybe you can come home even more. Or you may have been feeling shaken up since the pandemic or since whatever. So maybe we can uh, walk together a little bit with that. So far so good? Okay. So I want to touch on uh, one of the seven aspects of the soul, as I understand it. Um, I have been told that Sidi alludes to this in many places in his teachings. 
I um I can't tell you page and number, you know, page and book where this is. Um, this is a Sufi teaching, uh, and it is uh, something given by our teachers. Um, so this aspect of the soul that I want to focus on is the mineral soul, the Ruh Madini. And the vibration of this soul, and walk with me here if you'd like. This has been fun for me too to, to plan this and experiment with this and experience it with you. Walk with me here if you're willing. The vibration of this ruh, this aspect of the soul, is in the skeleton. So inviting the possibility of connecting with this ruh vibration in the skeleton and the center of it in the spine. The spine is adjacent to the secret of secrets, which is where our pure divine spark resides. This is where the mineral soul resides. So in a way, our most physical place is actually our most subtle place. So when the Ruh Madini is in balance, it gives us a strong foundation and also a solid inner structure to support us in life. It gives us a sense of why we're here on the earth. It gives a sense of connection on the atomic level and the subatomic levels. They're very deep. You know, as the saying is, the more earth, the more heaven. It's like the higher we want to go, the more grounded we need to be. Balance in the Ruh Madini will help us with this, is, is, is actually foundational to this. So we're like a tree with the roots deep in the ground and the branches high into the earth. CD says at some point, sit in the shade and eat the fruit. Yes, when your roots are deep and your branches are high, you can relax. You can sit in the shade. You can eat fruit. You know, enjoy the fruits of that existence. So the trunk of the tree is the skeleton. It's, it's sound. I'll just take a take a lot, just taking a moment to feel into that. <sighs> now, as you can imagine, as we can all imagine, um, when there's imbalance in the mineral soul, there are two, two poles. One pole of when it's an imbalanced is rigidity and inflexibility. So where we can't adapt to changes in life. We're like hanging on to our point of view, hanging on to the way we've done things, uh, like stiff-necked, hard-headed, can't accept, can't adapt, can't change. You know, and whereas the willow might bend, a tree with shallow roots, it's imbalanced and hard trunk can get blown over in the wind. Or I don't know if you've ever seen or gone to a junkyard and seen a car that's been in a car wreck, God forbid. The older cars, the frames were usually really solid. Even, even with the impact, the frame doesn't collapse. The doors might collapse, but the frame stays solid. 
The problem with that is that all of the force from that collapse would be transmitted through the frame right into the person and would be much more dangerous, much fatal, or make more injuries. Nowadays, if you've ever been to a junkyard and seen the newer cars, they make them so the frames collapse when there's a collision, so that the force is taken up by the joints of the collapse that are built into the structure, so that that force is um, eased and there's much less force that hits the human being. I mean, God forbid we, we should anyone should be in a car accident, but maybe that makes sense. So when there's an imbalance in the mineral soul, one's, one pole is rigidity, inflexibility. The other pole is spineless. When you don't have the strength you need to make decisions you need to make, right? Or you're easily swayed, you change your mind, you look left and right, as Sidi might say. Or it's hard to stick with anything. You might, you might start with something and then drop it and get drawn off in another direction. A little bit like um, being a jellyfish. You know, jellyfish are created in a way that's perfect for jellyfish. You know, their part of their creation is to drift with the tides, and that's how they feed. That's how they create. So they take sustenance. That's how they mate and procreate and all of that. They're meant to drift with the tides. We are not meant to drift with the tides. We're meant to be flexible sometimes. But we're also meant to have strength to make decisions and to stick with the decisions if that's the right thing to do. So we want to be flexible enough to assimilate the knowledge that we need and take in new knowledge if needed and know when we need to change, when change needs to happen. So, for example, a bird will build, actually birds, many birds build nests in a willow tree, but they don't build the nests on the beautiful branches that flow in the wind. They blow it in the, in the angles and the crotches of the tree where it is sturdy and strong. So the willow tree offers both groundedness and flexibility. Willow trees rarely blow over in the wind and yet they're strong and grounded when they, where they need to be. So balance in the mineral soul means we can stay strong, foundational, know who we are, what our task is, roots in the ground to reach to the sky. Imbalance means either too rigid or floppy. And of course, this balance and imbalance affects us in every part of our life. You know, as, as Sufis, or really anyone, um, we're accountable for every area of our life. You know, our worship is in every area of our life. Our walking, our actualizing the fruits of our spiritual journey comes in every area of our life. Thank goodness, you know, we have help everywhere. So in our relationships, you know, how, how often is it hard to know when to say no to something or to say yes to something that you really don't want to, like you're, you're meant to bow and we know it's the right thing and we, we just can't. Or in our job, you know, a place of work. or in our home, or in our spiritual path, places of balance and imbalance act out everywhere. So let's just take a moment, just take a breath. It's kind of a, this is a, feels to me like this is a very deep group, and that was just a big download, so let's just, um, Let's digest a moment, <laughs> just breathing in, opening our feet to the ground, whether if you know whether you're on a floor or whatever you're on, just wiggling your feet maybe, wiggling your body in the chair or however you're, wherever you are.
opening our base, just imagining the bottom of our body just gently opening and widening and deepening. Feeling into the subtle aspect of the soul that resides near the spine, near the secret of secrets, it's in the spine. think about minerals, you think about a rock, a rock doesn't rebel, you know, you put a rock down, the rock stays there. It's, uh, it's solid. So, um, I'd like to offer two qualities that help with um, help bring us back into balance. And they're a good practice, a good regular practice, if you're drawn to that, if you feel like it helps you. Um, actually, so first I would like, if you're, if you're willing, uh, think of a place in your life right now, if you're willing, whether it's uh, with a spouse or a friend, it could be any relationship, a parent, a child, where there's a change happening, or a place in your work, or in your neighborhood, anything in your spiritual walking. Just think of a place right now that's in flux, where change is... Uh, calling the place of change or it could even be a place that's changing and it feels really scary or it could feel like a place of indecision like you should make up your mind. You know you should make up your mind about something and you just can't, can't do it. Anything in that territory, if there's a place in your life. Take a moment too if you even feel where that might be in your heart or in your body. You may connect it with that way, you may not. You may get a visual picture. It may just be a memory or it may be like, oh yeah, I know this is happening. It, however you get it, we all perceive in different ways. Let's take a moment and make sure you if you, if you can, connect with that place. And together on mute, um, we'll recite Ya Allah, Ya Halim. Halim is the gentle, the tolerant, the clement. It contains everything. It brings appropriate flexibility. And don't worry, if you feel like you're too flexible, this will not make you even more too flexible. It doesn't work like that. It, it works just the right way. So, Ya Allah, Ya Halim. Ya Allah, Ya Halim. 
says he loves to hear us calling him by his beautiful names. Invoking the true flexibility, resiliency. Inshallah, balancing, inshallah, the mineral soul. Inshallah. Take a moment and just check in with that issue, assuming you had something. If you didn't have something in specific, just feel. If you're willing, feel into your body and your, your general state. Just notice if anything's changed or if you have any insights. And you may not, it's okay. Whatever your response to this is, is the perfect response for you. But be open to Allah responding when we call. Uh, 
かもないな
Simply allow just noticing whatever you notice. And if you're willing in your body or in your thoughts, in your heart, your state, whatever that is. Abdullah, the fan went on. Can you hear me still? Yeah, no, we're good. Okay. Yeah, so inviting your Halim and your Azim to continue to send their gifts. for us, maybe into the mineral soul. The Ruh Madini. And if anyone would like to unmute and share what your experience is, what you've noticed, you are very welcome. You have a few minutes. Go ahead and just unmute yourself if you're on a phone, uh, star six. And while that evolves, we can also sit and marinate together, alhamdulillah. You're on mute, beloved. Normally our group isn't quite this quiet, so I'm sort of surprised at the silence, but. Alhamdulillah. When this started with Halim, I was aware of how things that I promise to do and don't quite get to the level of burden mm. that puts on and the burden of not quite getting it done gets in the way of getting it done. It's like it makes a hump. And the Halim was just kind of, oh, it's easy. It just, it just brought in this sense of ease that these pictures that something was larger than it was sort of vanished. Mm. And then when you went on to the al Alim, you know, the vastness just supported that. Mm. Oh, these are, these are small things in the scheme of things, no problem. Not, no problem that makes them easy to just do. You know, so that in the way I can be flexible and I can go with it and I can get them done and you know, so it was just this gift that smoothed out all these things that I didn't even know were there as issues. I mean, I knew it was on my to do list, but I didn't know the degree to which it was in my body. So it was really quite beautiful. So thank you. Alhamdulillah. Oh, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Glad you showed up and like you stepped in and opened to it. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So perhaps someone else will share. And it's fine if people don't, you know, they're, everybody's marinating, but I would love to know because it's, this is, uh, it's been good for me too to prepare this teaching and do it. I really enjoyed it.
Go ahead, Rivka. Assalamu alaikum. Hey, alaikum assalam, sister. Such a beautiful teaching. Um, I was wondering if this was part of Fauzia's class. Did you learn this from Fauzia in her last? Oh, okay. Did she teach she, she, well, she taught something a couple Saturdays ago that I missed called the seven aspects of the one soul. I, was I really that. wanted to do that one, but I missed it. So I was just curious. Um, this is, I think it's, just, it sounds like it's, this is the first aspect of the seven aspects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, so um, it's really apropos for me right now, um, if that's the right way to put it. Um, I was, I'm going through a walking right now where I have not, there's a part of me that hasn't fully come into my body. And I have been going I had a healing this morning and it was very intense and through it I found Allah brought me to a place physically that I felt at peace probably for the first time since I was three mm -hmm. and I but it was up in the stars but at least I was like physically connected and I felt like okay I feel some peace and and um and then he started to like bring me down and I started to feel like gravity and like a gravitational pull through my limbs and through like my spine. And the quality was metal, like very metallic. Mm. So I was kind of just sitting with whether or not that was part of the, this part of the soul, but, um, interesting huh yeah wow so i'm somewhere coming down <laughs> i'm not down but i'm coming down <laughs> and um whatever that means and um anyway while doing alim that was just very soothing but then doing the adim um there was still a place that i was working through some of the trauma and I was, there was some panic and the, mm -hmm. that solidification of, um, of stability was coming in some, somewhat with that quality. The solidification of stability was coming in with the Halim? The Adim of that vastness. Yeah. But I... I mostly wanted to share about the metallic part because I just, I was curious if you knew anything about that or had heard anybody else talk about it. Well, it certainly sounds like it's in the same territory. You know, metal, metal comes from mineral and mineral, minerals and metal and rock and are all the same thing. I, I mean, I would hold it spaciously and let the understanding continue to seep in. That's, that's what comes to me. Yeah, it was like um, a little bit like, um, What is the pole? Isn't there like a pole or something that runs through the core of the earth or, or no? I think so. I mean, I think there, there are a lot of correspondences like that. So sorry, I'm not sharing from the so much from the experiential right now, but I just thought it felt kind of relevant. Yeah, that's fine. Share from whatever you want. But there, but I, what I'm hearing, what I'm hearing is making connections among different things. Like the, I'm hearing connection. I mean, I know you like to understand things in your, you know, mm -hmm. wonderful at, at, at it. And what I'm hearing is like the connection with the stars and the, the, 
frame, you know, the metallic part of the spine and the uh, everything like like the pieces are sort of coming together in a way. Um, it was literally like dropping down, like allow us like, okay, it's okay to come closer into this plane. Like I was literally like dropping from the stars down into the earthly plane mm -hmm. and it just felt like a gravitational pull, mm -hmm. like a sinking down, coming down further into the earthly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, um, if you, if you want a thought, do you ever recite Surah Rahman? I've been listening to it mm -hmm. online a little bit. Yeah. It's... Feels like that would really continue to be healing for you because as you know, it talks about things are in balance. Allah raised the heavens and, you know, everything is in balance and everything, you know, uh, and it's all and it's good. Allah put created tremendous goodness. You know, Fabiyayala, you Rabbi Kumatu Kadiban. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you mentioned that too, because after that I was taken like totally to the depths of the ocean. Like mm -hmm. so it was the two opposites. Yeah. Are you open to a suggestion? Yes, please. Yeah. If you can do it without like getting ticks or something, I would actually, when we're done, uh, I'd go out and sit on the grass. Mm, okay, that's a good idea. Even lie on the grass if you can. I don't know what your situation's like, but sit on the grass and walk on the, or walk on the grass in your bare feet. Alhamdulillah. Thank you. Yeah, we're moving. So it's very, it's oh. all, it's all connected, huh? <laughs> You mm -hmm. definitely go sit on the grass. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I'm you. Sister. I'm looking at the time, Pat Abdullah. Do we have time for one more question or should we end? No, let's, uh, we've got time. Um, let's see if anybody else has a question and then maybe we can end the way that we began with uh, drumming in a little thicker. Sure. And if not, that's fine. But, you know, any, any else, anybody else would care to share? Assalamu alaikum, Layla. Alaikum assalam, sister. Hi. Um, I, I'm just, I just wanted to say really briefly that this is a really perfect uh, teaching. Um, it was really beautiful. I loved everything that you said. I'm sitting with some of the things that you said over the last uh, week, alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. And as always, I love your sense of humor. <laughs> I really do. And... Um, as somebody who definitely feels a little bit like a hermit on the Mount Newton sprouts, um, I, Alala still walks me very deeply um, on the inner. And um, I just loved everything that you said, and it was just perfect. And that's all I really wanted to share. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. I'm glad you came. Yeah, me too. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Sufi Center, Minnesota, too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sarah. I mean, that's that's the thing, you know, it's like it's, with our lives, uh, industrial society, like some people do work with their bodies and their hands for a living, but if you don't, it's a challenge to stay connected to your body sometimes. I asked CD one time what the best physical exercise was for me, and he said, work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, clean house, garden, you know, I mean, it's, which doesn't mean you can't do other things, but it's like, it's so easy to leave the body behind sometimes, particularly when we have painful memories or that kind of thing with them. So, um, but we are meant to be in a physical body and there's great joy. And uh, but besides it was an order from the law. So I guess we should take it seriously. <laughs> so anyway, beloved Tumblila, it was wonderful to be with you and um, happy Independence Day. Thank you, Layla, for a wonderful teaching and a beautiful oh, yeah. teaching. Yeah, 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 yeah.